Hello, I'm Peter, and today I'm going to talk to you about clay pot heaters. Uh, recently, Karen and I, Karen, my wife, and I were looking at people talking about clay pot heaters that you can use giving a simple heater for something like a greenhouse. So we decided we'd investigate this a bit further uh, and see what it involves. A lot of different people have got different ways of doing this, but simply put, what you need is a clay pot like this, a simple clay pot like we used to use in the old days. They're made of clay, uh, they're porous, that's important. And the other thing you're gonna need is a number of these tea lights, which basically are a candle. And um, we're gonna use a number of those together. So I'm gonna show you how to put one of these together the simple version and then we'll talk about some of the variations. The first thing you're going to have to do is to have something that is a, a heat resistant surface to put it on. I've got this tile here which I'm going to use uh, and then we're going to have a pot and I've got two sizes of pots. This is one that um, is I think it's measured as a 21 centimeter pot. The other one is slightly smaller. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this over the candles on top of this tile and I'm going to do it something like this. Now we now need to put the pot over the top but if we do that we'll cut off the oxygen and the candles will go out. So we need to do something to raise the pot off the tile. A number of people have got different ways of doing this the simplest way, I suppose, is to use a pile of coins, and I've just got some coins here, which I'm going to put on the tile, and then put the pot on top of them, about there. Now, that's not too bad, but I, I really don't like that. I, I think that's a little bit precarious so my modification of that is to take away the, the coins and I've put together some brackets now these are very simple they're just some brackets that I had in the uh, workshop um, I'm going to bolt those together like that so I'm just going to put the bolt through there put the nut onto that it really doesn't matter what you use, providing it's flame resistant, that it's not going to catch fire. Um, I did look at various other options to start off with, but decided against those. So I've just put that together with a little simple bolt. You could use anything. Um, there are all sorts of things you could use. These just came to hand and they illustrate quite nicely what's going on. So I'm just going to put them like that and then I'm going to put the pot over the top of it like that and that's simply it. What you need to do is to make sure because these pots are porous uh, if you've had them lying around or you've just bought them and they've been outside at the garden centre they could have absorbed moisture and you do need to, for safety purposes you need to make sure that these are quite dry. So I've had these inside for a day or so and I'm fairly confident that those are, are dry. So we could simply light the candles and put that over the top. Now just before we do that some modifications that people have suggested are that you take a smaller pot and you put that on the, move those in slightly, pot over there and then you put the bigger pot over the top of that one. There's a few simple truths with this. One is that the candles only produce a certain amount of heat. Uh, they will only give out a certain amount of heat so it really doesn't matter what you do with these pots. You're not going to increase the amount of heat produced by the candles unless you do something like increasing the number of candles that you've got. 
There's, it's a limited amount of heat that you've got. What we're trying to do is to absorb the heat from the candles by the pots so that they uh, take on the heat and then they will release that over a period of time. So the purpose of having two pots is that the inner pot will hold some of the heat, the outer pot will also heat up. Uh, there's various other ways of doing this as well. You can put the pot like that and you can put another pot on top of it. And we've seen one variation where the person's got a number of little pots, one on top of the other. Um, same thing's the case, it's just a different way of distributing the heat. So basically, the pot is going to absorb the heat, it's going to act like a storage heater, which is basically a series of bricks or stones or something that absorb the heat and then release them over a period of time. That's all we're going to try and do. We're going to now have a look and see how much heat is actually given out by these things and over what sort of period of time. And Karen's got a, a heat gun that shows the temperature of, well, she's used it on me. So you can see that if I'm, if it shows, uh, she pointed at me, like then you can see it's can picking see up my face and the reddest bits are the hottest bits. It also gives you a temperature reading. And I think on that one, it's showing about 36 point six something like that. Thirty-three point two. My glasses. Uh, it's averaging about thirty-three. Mm, possibly slightly low then in that case. Uh, and the, excuse me, the scale there is the the colours represent okay. the temperatures. Okay, that's so good. Red is hot. And we've got a, a temperature reading of the pots. And what we'll do is we'll once we light the candles. We're just going to use one pot. I think we'll just keep it simple, use one pot for the time being, yeah. see what the temperature of the pot is when we started, which we've just done, uh, and then see how it heats up over a period of time and how much heat it's going to then give out. Before we do that, I'd just like to make you aware of one or two things that we picked up when we were looking at uh, investigating this. These are candles, uh, they're tea lights. Uh, whatever you do, however you vary these, effectively you've got a, f a naked flame. So I would be very careful about using this in any situation other than one where I would be comfortable to have a candle. So I'd be happy to use this in the greenhouse because there's a limited amount of damage that could happen if these got knocked over. I certainly wouldn't be using this if there were children around or animals that could knock them over because these tea lights, the uh, wax in them will melt uh, and will be liquid and this could go all over the place. So you need to be really careful. It's a good idea, but with some caution. So I'm going to now light the candles. And put the pot over the top and we'll see what's going to happen. Now again a number of variations on this are that people close over the hole at the top. I can feel heat coming out of that now. So they put something like a washer on top to restrict the amount of heat coming out and some even have put a coin over the top of that to stop all the heat coming out. I'm not sure about that so we'll take that one off and we'll just restrict the amount of heat coming out through the hole. Okay, while that's heating up, just a couple of other things. Um, a tea light like this, this one here, um, it's easy to knock it over, it's fairly flimsy. And one of the things that um, Karen's got, which we thought might be a, an improvement, was one of these tea light holders. And if you pop that inside, that actually makes it much more robust and therefore it's less likely to get knocked over, um, which could be an improvement on just having the tea lights as they are. So now we're just going to leave it for a little while, leave it for 15 minutes or so uh, and see what's happening to the temperature. Uh, 
I can feel already that the top of the pot is getting quite hot. That's quite hot to the touch already and it's only been running for a few moments. So we'll leave that for a moment uh, and come back to it again in 15 minutes or so. Uh, Karen's just taken some pictures of the top of the pot and you'll see that I haven't quite got this pot lined up because you can see that there are three red, uh, sorry, four red circles, which actually is the heat coming off each of the individual uh, tea lights. So I'm just going to move it over slightly so that it's more evenly spread. Anyway, we'll leave that for a few minutes, see what happens. But as I say, that's already heating up quite nicely. That's getting quite hot, even as I speak now. OK, see you in a minute. OK, so it's been running for about half an hour now. And if I just touch the pot, I can't really can't touch that at the top. That's too hot to touch. So Karen's just used the gun on it to, to see what temperature is. Uh, that's really quite warm now. and. I think from the point of view, if you've got a greenhouse and you just want to keep it above zero, then this would do a really good job. Not sure how long the tea lights will actually last for, but it's doing a pretty good job. So um, I think the experiment has worked. Uh, we've proved that it does uh, contain heat, that it does store it and then lets it out. Um, just be very careful if you're going to use it and don't use it somewhere that uh, could possibly get knocked over and cause any sort of damage. OK, thank you very much indeed for listening. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, if you did, then please do subscribe. And we've got quite a lot of other videos which are to do with plants uh, and uh, flowers. So particularly one about carnations, which you might find interesting. So have a look out for those on the link. Um, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Thanks very much indeed. Bye for now.